So I start my third presentation and this is the last presentation for me. And I'll kind of like switch the topic from distance approach to hedge ratio estimation method. Um, you may have heard of hedge ratio estimation or not, but it is one of the most important topics in portfolio constructions. So this session will cover just the basics of popular estimation method. So you can do like more research or you can do <clears throat> your own work on the topics you think interesting in this slide. So um, in this presentation, after introducing the key concepts of hedge ratio estimation, I'll show two different types of hedge ratio estimation methods. So one is a single period method and the other is multi-period method. Also, I will touch some of the advanced methods as well. So please um, stay till the end of the presentation. And it's my third time introducing myself and I'm Juhan. So for those who just came, I'm Juhan. I'm a research apprentice at Hassan Thames. I'm senior at Yonsei University. So <clears throat> this presentation um, following closely follows the paper in the slides. So please check it out. Okay, let's see the key concepts of the hedge ratio estimation first. The hedging problem is posed as the following equation in the slide. Here, the P1 represents the market value at observation T of a portfolio we wish to hedge, and Pn represents a set of variables, like which are instruments or portfolios available for building a hedge. And the hedging problem is in computing the vector Wn, <clears throat> which is holdings of each variable. And in this context, you may use either stocks or portfolios for the variable P. However, here, I'll use the word portfolio for the rest of the slide. And the, had, and the hedging error is as follow, EH equals ST plus H minus ST, which is the error after H observations. So whether EH, this hedging error, is stationary or non-stationary in variance is a crucial problem to hedge ratio estimations. Usually, portfolio managers fear um, the case that EH is non-stationary in variance because in that scenario, the hedging error is unbounded. And a special case of non-stationary occurs when EH has a unit root, in which situation the hedging errors follow what is commonly known as a random walk. So um, the hedge ratio estimation methods are usually split into two ways of estimation. One is single period and the other, other is multi-period as I mentioned before. And the single period method is also known as static method. And it, it assumes that the returns of stocks or returns of portfolios are IID. However, the multi-period, which also known as dynamic method, does not assume IID random perturbations. And let's take a look at the single period method first. So um, there are a lot of single period methods out there. And here um, I brought three well-known methods in the single period. OLS indifference, minimum variance portfolio, which is MVP, and PCA, the principal competence analysis approach. So we'll see the OLSD first. Um, so the OLS indifference, because of its simplicity, this is the one of the most widely used method. As the name implies, it utilized OLS in the differences of market values of portfolios. And as the equation shows here, where delta P represents the change in market value between observations, the solution is W equals minus beta. So here is a necessary condition that the alpha needs to be statistically insignificant, which means zero. And despite its simplicity, it still has like a lot of limitations. As it is, as it is extremely restrictive condition as follows in this slide, it assumes that any change in target portfolio, like the P1, must be offset by the hedging portfolio, like P2 to Pn. And next is the MVP, Minimum Variance Portfolio. Um, it is introduced by Markovich and settings are as follow. It assumes that Delta P observations are IID normal. And here um, the V is the covariance matrix of Delta P where its first column represents 
the covariance against the portfolio we wish to hedge P1. So it can be solved using Lagrangian um, and optimal beta and weights are as follows in the slide. Like if you wanna know the solving process of this optimization problem, not only this, but for other methods as well, you can look into the papers in the reference slide. They showed like all the proof and all the solving process. So please take a look at it. And the solution corresponds to the portfolio on the uh, left most like point on the efficient frontier. And it is worth noting that the MVP method delivers the minimum risk solution under the assumption of normality. But if we go beyond the assumption, a number of like alternative objective functions could be chosen as well. So this may not be the optimal method for hedge ratio estimation as well. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, the last method in single period is principal competence analysis. Um, here, the basic settings are similar to MVP method. Delta P are assumed to be IID normal. And the target is to compute the vector of weightings beta such that delta P times beta is hedged against moves of the M largest principal components where M is typically N minus one. So the goal of this method is to find beta which follows the equation in sight where W star transpose is the transpose eigenvector matrix after removing the columns associated with the unhashed eigenvectors. And this approach presents the advantage of searching for a solution that hedges against the principal sources of risk. And like the, um, the past two methods in the single period method, it does not guarantee that the source of risk we remain exposed to is stationary. Um, however, it could be said that having the smallest variance in differences, the stationarity of the um, eigenvectors with the smallest eigenvalues is a minor concern as the components we remain exposed to have the smallest variances in these differences. And this makes PCA like a valid consistent method of hedging. And that's why it's a lot, um, it's, it is used a lot. So now we move from single period to multi-period method. So there are two methods I wanna share you, you, I wanna share with you today. There are a lot of multi-period methods um, out there. So you should probably look for others as well. But the first one I wanna share is OLSL, which is OLS in levels. And the second one I wanna share is error correction model, which is simply ECM. Okay, so first let's see the OLSL. <clears throat> the goal itself is similar to OLSD method, but the condition that the hedge is effective when S is stationary in mean and variance gives different approach to OLSD. However, however, as the error correction component is not separated from the observed levels in the equation, the calculated weight and beta may not be optimal. In other words, in the um, OLSD, in the single period method, the hedging errors EH in the, uh, so the EH is not corrected over time. This is because of the um, specification indifferences, which has removed like all memory of the process. But although in OLSL, it corrects the error as time goes, as it does not use the differences, but it still does not separate the terms of error correction in the estimation method. So this is the main reason why the ECM, like the method I will introduce soon, has become popular after this. Okay. So the last method and the second method from the multi-period method is ECM. If an error correction representation is verified, the series of it are co-integrated by um, Engel and Granger 1987. So although this model only shows a hedge ratio between two portfolio, the extension of this method will be more discussed in the advanced uh, method later. So <clears throat> in the equation here in the slide, P, small p, is the natural log of market value, large P, and gamma here, uh, has to be tested positive in order to be effectively hedged. And the optimal holdings will be as follow 
where k equals e to the beta zero divided by gamma. Um, okay, so these were some basic hedge ratio estimation method that are widely used, just the basic like high level concepts of it. And now I'll present some of the advanced method. And as it is like more complicated than the simple period and multi-period method, I'll just briefly go through the concepts of it. So if you wanna know deeper or, or if you wanna see like the whole equations of this advanced method, I recommend um, to go to the papers I referred in the reference page. So there are two methods I wanna share for the advanced method. The first one is um, box GIO canonical decomposition, which is BTCD. And the other one is DQ Fuller Optimal, which is DFO. So first, BTCD. Um, so Box and Tiao introduce a canonical transformation of an n-dimensional stationary autoregressive process. And the components of the transformed process can be ordered from least to most predictable. And the estimation goes as follows. Um, for the like here VARL equation, which is like extension version of VAR, which we call a forecasting equation here. And this method fits beta and it estimate PT hat from the beta. So with this um, estimated PT, it undergoes a decomposition and solve for optimal weight. In short, like the objective is to come up with the matrix of coefficients that deliver a vector of forecast with the most predictive power over the next observation. Um, although like the authors like Box and Tiao like, did not really um, make a new hedging method, <clears throat> but the concepts they proposed is being used in the hedging ratio estimation area. So the next is DFO. Um, in the previous chapter in the multi-period method, the ECM, is a dynamic model limited to two dimensions. And I already mentioned about the extensions in the advanced method, and this is the one, DFO. This limitation of ECM could be solved through a canonical transformation of a multivariate, multi-equation specification with, as we did for PT city. Um, this approach will give stronger structure through a series of equations and each imposing an individual autoregressive equilibrium condition. So the target is to find an optimal W where the probability of having a unit root in the spread S here is minimized. So this is like, um, you can understand it by this is an extension version of ACM. Okay, so this, these are some um, references you can check. And this is the end of the presentation. So I think we'll have like, long Q&A session before we move on to the next speaker. Thank you.